there. So I am an actor or a director producer. I'm also an actor improviser. So I kind of have been on all sides of the camera. Um, I'm also a breakup coach. So DM me about that if you ever want to talk about a breakup that you're going through. Uh, I do a lot of things. But um, like I said, some of my passions are video production and being on camera. And I work with brands like The Knot, Spartan Race, Google Cloud, and some top influencers to help them grow their online following. And I want to know from you guys in the chat, what kind of videos do you currently make? And I saw we did, we kind of went through it a little bit and I got some of your answers, but anybody who has just joined or if you want to re-answer this question, what kind of videos do you currently make? And if you don't make any videos now, what kind of videos do you want? to be making? Let me know in the chat. Try to close the chat right here. All right. Podcast is video podcast. That's a great way to optimize your time. Yes, Leah. Um, small snapshots of events and travel. No editing. Okay, cool. Editing is time consuming. Sometimes we don't want to even deal with that. Short travel videos to use in my blog post, very short travel highlights, and TikTok and Instagram, cool. So yeah, way to use TikTok. I'm really excited about that. Wanna start a travel YouTube channel? Yeah, <laughs> TikTok, um, cool, all right. We've got a lot of different types of videos and not to be awkward on camera, all right, cool. Well, you are in the right place, Tegan and Alex. I, or one of you, I don't know which one. Um, make videos that focus on how to travel despite having an office job. That's so good, Alistair, I love that. Um, great, it seems like a lot, both of you, okay, cool. Travel highlights and cooking demos, wow. All right, we've got a lot, a big variety of videos to make. So um, hopefully I'll be able to cover just like the you know broad strokes of how to create video for your travel company and brand. Um, but, okay, so here is what we're gonna learn today. I've got the three tools for boosting camera confidence so you can make more impactful travel vlogs. The, gr the thing that I really love about video is that it's a transformational experience you get to create for your audience. So you get to take them from point A to point B, so the beginning of the video to the end of a video, and you have full creative control over the experience that that person is having. And that's really, it's, that, that can, you know, you can go in a million different directions with that, but it's really important that you show up powerfully in order to have these, this impactful transformative experience on your audience. So if you're really serious and excited about making awesome travel videos, I have a really special offer for you at the end and then we're going to do a little Q&A as well. So stick around for that. Um, but before we dive in, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and why, why should you listen to me? Why Paige? Um, so I, as Leah said, I was um, living in Japan teaching English in 2009. Right after I graduated from university, I was like, I really want to travel and I want to see the world and have new experiences. And so I moved to Japan. Um, let me know in the chat, have you ever been to Japan? Is that one of your, your destinations that you've traveled to? And what did you think of it? <laughs> and if you haven't, do you want to go? It's a really fun place to go. Two weeks before COVID hit. Oh my gosh, Tokyo. Oh, okay. So you guys were there pretty recently. I know. I'm also looking for, yes, Megan, I, I'm looking for an excuse to go back too. All right. Been there, did a 20 hour layover. Wow. Amazing. Used to live in Tokyo. Wow. Cool. All right. So we've got a lot of, oh, your husband is Japanese. Number one on the bucket list. All right. Fingers crossed. Maybe we can all meet there next year. Um, so I was living in Japan teaching English and I really fell in love with the culture and the food and everything. But I love takoyaki too, Ian. Oh my gosh. It's one of my faves. Um, but there was one problem. 
And the problem was I couldn't communicate. And I had a degree in communication. Like I, it was really frustrating that I couldn't communicate. I didn't know the language. So I started making little videos of all the Japanese things that I thought were so interesting about this country. And um, I would put them on YouTube. And I would put them on YouTube and just share these links with my friends and family. And then something happened that was really interesting. I started getting all these views on my videos and all these likes. And I'm like, what is going on? Obviously you can see this was in 2010. So this was still in the infancy of YouTube. Like YouTube didn't even know what it was gonna become at this, at this time. Like this was a long time ago um, in, YouTube, in YouTube ages. So I, um, I just started getting really curious and exploring what, how to use video to tell a story. And that was only the beginning. I came back from Japan and I started a production company and I started this company making videos that I really loved. I started my own YouTube channel. As you can see, I painted my camera because I just loved making videos so much and it was just so much fun for me. Um, and it really, it really paid off. I saw the power of video firsthand. I landed a $12,000 contract with my business, continued hitting these like big months. Um, I had clients that were just coming through the door ready to work with me. They were like, I saw your video, how can I work with you? I grew my business to six figures by year two, and I started building an agency so that I could serve more clients. And next slide. It wasn't always an easy road though. So the demand for video really started changing. Um, our clients were looking for more quantity of videos. They wanted, they wanted more videos. They wanted to, to put more content out rather than like one or two really beautiful hero videos. So um, there was no longer a demand for what I was offering. So I really needed to like hit the reset button, go back to the drawing board. And after almost five years, I shut down the production agency and I moved to Los Angeles. Um, and I started teaching people how to make their own video content and show up with confidence. And that's what I really love to do. I love to help people feel really, really good on camera, feel really lit up and make a video where they're like, Oh my God, I didn't know that it was that fun and easy, but it is, and it can be. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. How are we going to make video creation fun and easy? So this is the main feature for y'all, for you all, is the three tools for boosting your camera confidence. All right. But first I want everybody to just like take a second get grounded in whatever seat you're in, maybe close your eyes for like a second and just take a really big deep breath in. Fill up your belly and your lungs and your whole body with air and then just exhale it all out. Like a balloon. All right, notice how you feel right now in this moment. So, um, that was actually my first tip. <laughs> Tricked ya. Um, so number one, so important. If you have ever taken an acting class or a, um, a singing class, you first, very first day, first lesson is breath because it is so, so supportive for helping you show up. It floods, so there's like many, many, many reasons why your breath is so important. One reason is it floods your brain with oxygen. So you can really be present in your videos. You're not doing this thing where you're in your head. You're just like, oh, I know what I'm going to say. And I feel really clear on what I'm going to say. And I'm going to go for it. Um, it also supports your voice. Um, like I said, in any singing class, your voice is your instrument. Your body is your instrument. So you can speak with more power and confidence. When you have that breath supporting your voice, you can really be more powerful in showing up in your videos. And then, next slide. Breath slows you down. So you can really get out of your head and into your body. 
that's the one of the biggest things that happens when I'm directing a video shoot um, for a client who's not necessarily an actor or a trained a trained actor. They tend to get in their head, and when they get in their head, they lose sense of being present in the moment because they're trying to think of the next thing to say. Is that relatable to anybody? Can anybody like just yes in the chat relate to that? That you get in your head when you're like kind of forced and the red light is blinking and you're forced to say something and you're like, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's really like the biggest solution for that is take a breath, slow down. Yeah, every day, absolutely. Yeah, this is, even actors get in their heads sometimes. Oh my gosh, Jeffrey, yes, totally. And, and get nervous too. Nerves are normal. They're so, so normal. And it's just a matter of breathing through it and having that breath support. Yes, I'm so glad you guys can all relate to this. <laughs> Cause it happens, yeah, it happens to me too. And then I just remind myself, okay, breathe, come back to myself and then I can, I can take it from there. So that is really like the number one foundational key to camera confidence. At work, if there's a bunch of stuff that comes up, taking a breath helps for sure, Grant. Yeah, breathwork class, that's a really good point, Leah. I've taken a few breathwork classes. They're intense, they really bring some stuff up. Yeah, LA. <laughs> All about the breath, great. All right, so you guys ready to move on to the number two tip? Here we go. So I want you to picture one, oh wait, this isn't the next, I forgot that this slide was in here. Okay, picture one of your favorite travel destinations. So just like, we'll just embrace the power of breath real quick. So close your eyes and imagine yourself in your favorite travel destination. And then just take another deep breath. <sighs> Feels good to slow down sometimes, doesn't it? All right. So number two, we're moving on, is your body. So we've got your breath and now we've got your body. And if you feel great on the inside, it will be reflected on camera. So there are many things that you can do in your body to make yourself just feel really good before you go on camera. If you are tired or hungover, or um, if you like overate and you're just feeling kind of like sluggish that day, that will show up. It will show up on camera. So you really want to maintain your feel like feeling good inside your body. So I want everybody in the chat, let me know what is something that makes you feel great in your body? What are things that you do? It could be something so as small as like drinking a cup of tea. Yoga is a great one. Yep. Yep. What else? Anything else? Sunshine and coffee, quick dance party. Yes. Eating healthy is so important. Taking a walk. Oh my gosh. So many times I've been in, in shoots and I'm like, okay, we're going to, everything, everything just gets really tense. I'm like, everybody, we're taking a walk. Like we just got to go walk around the block, get some fresh air and recalibrate. Maggie, karaoke, sister. Yes. I love karaoke. That makes me feel so good in my body cup of coffee in the morning. These are all such good answers. So I'm actually going to walk you guys through a, an exercise. It's called crazy eights. And I don't know anybody who is, seems like there are some actors here. Um, so anybody who's done this before, join in. And even if you haven't done it before, let's join in. So I'm um, back on camera. So ideally, you're, you want to stand up for this. I, you won't be able to see me if I stand up. But what you're gonna do, I'm actually gonna sit up here, is you're gonna do a shake down and you're gonna shake each limb starting with your right hand for eight counts. Then you're gonna shake your left hand for eight counts, right leg for eight counts, left leg for eight counts. Then we're gonna go down to seven, 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 and then six, and then all the way down to one. 
It's really fun. And if you, if you do it with me, you'll feel really energized at the end. All right. Are you guys ready? And if you're, and you may be on mute, but like, feel free to say the numbers out loud if you can. All right. This is your workout for the day. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Ready guys? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, four, five. 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 Speed it up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, four, one, four. Cool. Yeah, silly. Silly is huge. I love that, Grant. Um, yeah, it really helps you relax when you can do something like that. <laughs> that was a lot of steps. I'm out of breath. I'm going to stop my video again. All right. Um, <laughs> good thing we took that breath, Greg. Yeah, right? And maybe we all need one more breath. Ready? Let's inhale together. And exhale. Cool. Anybody who did that, how do you feel right now? <laughs> do you feel weird, wacky, silly, confident? Do you feel good in your body? Buzzing, awake, relaxed. Ah, oh, so, so good. I love that. Yep. So that's just a quick exercise that you can do if you're like, that was relaxing. Great. I love that. Yeah. Buzzing is a really good word. Um, that's an exercise you can do if you're just like feeling a little bit sluggish one day and you need to record a video, you know, or even if you don't need to record a video and you just want to go hang out with friends and you're like, I don't feel like it. Just do a quick crazy eights and, uh, and you'll be energized and ready to go. All right, so that was number two. And now for the third tool, and that is personality. So I want to know from all of you guys, do you compare yourself? Do you look at other people's videos or posts or blogs and say, oh, I'm not as good as them, or I won't ever get there, or whatever you say to yourself? Do you compare? Yeah. I know. Okay. Some, some people really manage it. It seems like some of you really know how to manage it. And then some, yeah, we are. We are our own worst critics. Absolutely. It's like, it's really easy to, to compare sometimes, you know, even though we try to avoid it, um, which is why I post zero. Wow. Yeah. It can really, it can really get us, put us in like a frozen state. It can kind of paralyze us and have us not post at all. Yeah. I totally hear you. So I have a little, a little solution for that. And this is the video personality quiz. You can, um, you can take this now or later, I, you know, just write down the link or um, I think Leo put it in the chat and then you guys can, take the personality quiz. It'll ask you a series of questions and at the end it'll just ask for your email address. Um, if you wanna unsubscribe after you can, but I send you a series of emails all about your video personality at the end. So um, the, whole, the whole point of knowing your video personality is so that you know you are different from other creators, okay? So you are not the same as someone who is doing a, a different kind of video that you're like, maybe I should be doing that, but I'm not, I'm not good enough for that, or I'm not like that person. Um, so yeah, there's definitely personalities for everybody. So I've categorized 
uh, the video personalities into four different categories. You've got the teacher, you've got the storyteller, the entertainer, and the leader. And you might even be able to get a hint as to like which, which personality you are based on. I'm going to break down the personalities. This is so, this is such a helpful way of allowing you to see that you are unique and you have strengths that you can bring to the table that somebody else might not have. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through each of these video personalities and <laughs> Grant, entertainer, hundred percent. Uh, Grant, you and I are the same. Okay. We're exactly the same. I am a hundred percent entertainer. Um, all right. So here's the teacher. You might be a teacher if, um, when you're traveling, you love to go to museums, tours, and notable sites. You soak up as much information as possible so that you can share it with your audience or with other people, your friends. Um, so in your videos for the teacher, it's really important that you embrace this zest for learning and this passion for passing that knowledge on. Okay, so really, this is your, your strength is knowledge and sharing knowledge and, and inspiring people through what you've learned, inspire people to travel. Colin says, 100% a teacher, awesome. And then it, there's a lot of freedom around knowing that because Colin, in your videos, you don't have to try to be an entertainer or like tell a really amazing story. You can, you can embrace the facts and share the facts and know that people will love you for your personality as the teacher. Great, Christine is the teacher. Awesome, now we've got the storyteller. I don't know if any of you know Erica, but Erica's definitely a storyteller, 100%. Um, oh, there's a typo here, sorry guys. All right, when you travel, you love to venture off the beaten path and talk to locals. You can turn any adventure, no matter how uneventful or boring, into a compelling story. Um, you can bring your story storytelling skills into your videos. So this is how you use your skills as a storyteller um, to really like draw your audience in and keep them engaged. That's the strength of a storyteller. And so lean into that, really lean into that strength that you have and use stories in your videos. Incorporate them in your videos more and more. Grant, wouldn't it be great to have a little balance of each? Absolutely. It's, it's fantastic if you wanna throw some facts in with your stories, right? If you wanna bring a little bit of teacher into your storyteller. This is really to illustrate where your strengths lie so that you don't get stuck comparing yourself to somebody else and thinking you're not, you're not good enough because we are all, we all have very different strengths that we bring to the table. So you might have a couple mix, you might have a mix or a balance of some of these and that's totally fine. Greg is a storyteller. Greg, I can't wait to watch your videos. Um, all right, then we've got the entertainer. Usually the entertainer knows they're the entertainer as soon as, as, soon as that pops up. So um, when you travel, you are the first one to hit the karaoke bar, find a great party, or go, I'm trying to move the chat out of here, or go to a show. Your passion for performing is totally magnetic and it really draws people to your energy. So using your unique flavor of entertainment, whether it's humor or maybe like some kind of magic or sleight of hand, I don't know what you do, dance into all of your videos, it will make them so irresistible to watch. Always hitting up a dance party, Sarah. Yes. Um, oh, sorry, party. I just read dance in there, maybe because I wanted to. Um, yeah, Grant, I totally get you, Grant. Yeah, you look at, yeah, exactly. You compare yourself to other people and you say, oh man, they recall information so easily. How come I can't do that? Well, it's not necessarily your strength. So, um, so it's definitely great to, to know what your strength is and lean into that, like really embrace who you are as a video, video creator. All right, Katie thinks she's an entertainer too, awesome. And again, you can be a mix of some of these. All right, and then last but not least, we have the leader. We love leaders because the leaders are the planners. When you travel, you love to plan out 
how, where you're gonna go, plan your day, you're bringing all of your friends along for the ride. Um, you are a natural leader. People are inspired by your path and love to follow you. I'm just trying to move my chat so I can read the chat and read my slides. Um, so when you're the leader, like you're basically Oprah, you guys, if you're the leader. So you're gonna use your videos to take a stand and inspire others to join you on your mission. Leaders generally have a reason that they travel, something that they are really passionate about, some kind of change they wanna see in the world. So you really embrace your leadership, step into your leadership. Yes, Steph, all right, she's the storyteller. Step into your leadership and you'll go far, all right? Um, so, a lot of you are already talking about this, but what is your video personality? Whether you took the quiz or not, what? My wife and family always let me plan the itinerary. And do you love planning the itinerary, Alistair? I, I assume you do, <laughs> and you must be really good at it. Yeah, leader-teacher combo. Right, and if you're two people, you can really like balance out those strengths, bring both of those into your videos that will that will like double the shine power of your content awesome ed is the leader leader teacher combo for sure cool cool oh i love this you guys so good um awesome all right so let's move on just to recap what we've covered so far we've got like the three main pillars of camera confidence so it's using your breath to support your on-camera presence how to feel great in your body so you can show up really powerfully in your videos and we did that wild crazy eights exercise and then how to discover and embrace your video personality so I mentioned a special offer at the beginning and I'm gonna tell you about it now um, because you might still have some questions about video. So like, how do I set up my camera and what equipment do you recommend? And how do I know what to do on what platform? Like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, what's the deal? Um, should I be doing live video, pre-produced video? What about editing? Ah, mind blown editing, what do I do? Um, and do you have any YouTube tips? Well, yes, I do have YouTube tips. I love YouTube, I'm a big fan. Storyteller of Phoebe, yeah, so if you take the quiz, you will get your friend's character um, in, the, in the results email. So yeah, that's just like a little special. So I, uh, I have a bunch of online courses. I have three online courses and I am offering all you guys my bundle, uh, my course bundle today. And I have never, ever, ever offered this before, but it's because I love Leah and Erica so much and the Nomadic Mac community. So the first, uh, the first course is Lights, Camera, Crush It. This is a six module self-paced program. They're all self-paced. Um, they're chock full of everything you need to get really confident when you create videos, learning how to shoot, how to edit, uh, how to market your videos. I think somebody asked about that. Really like helping you step into the spotlight in your travel business or your travel brand that you're building. So that's Lights, Camera, Crush It. That's the first course you're gonna get. Um, Yes, testimonial. So Masha says, by the end of the program, my confidence has increased exponentially. Not only am I no longer afraid to be in front of the camera, I actually love it. I booked three new clients thanks to my improved confidence and self-worth. I highly recommend this course to anyone who wants to come out of hiding, be more visible, and break through their fears. So that is uh, Lights, Camera, Crush It, which is like the basic course. Then I've got a course on top of that, which is Launch Your Channel Bootcamp. So if you want to do YouTube, this is the course for you. Um, this is a seven module self-paced program, and this will help you launch, grow, and star in your very own YouTube channel. It gives you all of my behind the scenes YouTube tips and tricks right there. Uh, and then just as just a testimonial for that, I'm swamped with business thanks to your YouTube channel launch bootcamp. Boom. Love getting emails like that from students. 
And then the final one, if you are really wanting to get confident on video, it takes a little bit of practice. So this is my 21 days to camera confidence course. Um, become totally confident on camera with a series of video challenges to push you outside of your comfort zone and help you shine in your videos. 21 days to camera confidence. You're going to get a new challenge every day for 21 days which is so much fun. And they're challenges that will really push you. Like it's gonna, it's gonna have you think about things and think about how you show up. And there's, I'll give you an example of one of my favorite challenges. It's the alter ego challenge. So you dress up as your alter ego. Like who is the, who is the Superman to your Clark Kent, right? And then you can really like play with that, that uh, character and it's, fun, so fun. So each course comes with really easy to follow video modules, content calendar template to help map out your plan, some super sleek worksheets to help you visualize and digest each lesson. You'll get checklists to support your journey, a VIP Facebook group for the duration of the program, and you're going to get one year of access to the course content. All right. So... Yeah, a lot of people are saying they're mixes. Yeah, you might be a mix of some of some of these. Totally. Um, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to see like what um, what what happens in the in the follow up emails. I'm giving I give you examples of different creators that you can follow that are your personality types so that you can really emulate what other people are doing. Um, in addition to the course bundle, you're also going to get my iPhone gear checklist, my video prep checklist, bonus module, which is live stream tips and tricks. I can give you guys these slides. You can go through like what every, what's included in everything. Um, and video scripts that convert, which is my favorite. This is an ebook that helps you turn passive scrollers into lifelong fans with a sexy scripting guide. And then I've got templates. So I've got 15 plug and play script templates for all different types of videos that you can create. So sales videos, YouTube trailers, um, website videos. So I have all the templates for you. You just plug in your own, um, your own vibe and style. So my biggest breakthrough is that it works. This is what Christine says. I learned that I can make a great video and that people will respond more to video than any other posts. Yes, Christine, it's true. So um, the investment here, if you were to purchase all of these together, so this is my bundle of three courses and the video script, um, the video scripts that convert ebook, uh, you would get this for $14.34. But if you wanted to get it today for the next 24 hours, you, well, it's 75% off basically. So it's 351.75. And um, I can drop the link in the chat if you want to check out. There you go. You guys have a coupon code NOMAD75 and that will give you 75% off that whole bundle of courses, which I've never offered before. So that is, that's what we've got. Yeah. Um, I think that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can like see all you guys. Paige, do you have your contact info on the last slide at all? If not, I will drop it in the chat. Yeah, you can put that in the chat. I can, okay. um, yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is just Paige Media. This is how you connect with Paige, everyone. In the chat, <laughs> we don't have a slide on it. Thank you so much for that. Oh my God, yeah, of course. That so was so many much fun. I love all the conversations about the video personalities. Yes. There's a lot going on in this one. I loved it. You had so many resources that people are able to utilize. You had exercises for us to do, and then you had information on how different parts of our body and our routines affect the way we are, per are perceived by people on camera, mm -hmm. which you don't, people don't think about this, but you know, you're an actor and there are some actors in the chat and they can attest to that. 
the, I'm, I am not an actor, so I would never think that, oh, the way I breathe and the way I, you know, do everything else will affect how people will see me on camera, so. Yeah, one single breath can have a major impact. It really That's awesome. can, can make such a difference. That's awesome. Well, everyone, if you have questions, go ahead and keep dropping them in the chat. Um, Paige, did you say you had, well, I have, I have a few questions here that I'll get to, but you said you had a, a pay, a slide of questions, correct? Like other topics that weren't covered? Yeah, the, there was a slide that was like, um, other things that you might be curious about. Mm, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So Grant, um, Grant missed the first bit of the webinar, but this might be great for people who yeah. joined late. Can you just summarize yeah. really quickly your experience and your personal level of growth and maybe why someone would choose your cor courses over the next um, person or influencer or coach? Yeah, totally. I, um, I have, sorry, I just got just like distracted by the chat. I, <laughs> I started making videos when I lived in Japan as an English teacher and I would post them on YouTube and they would get all these hits and I really had no idea what I was doing. I was just like very new to this YouTube thing. Um, and so when I came back from Japan, I really got curious and I wanted to learn about how to do how to do this video thing i didn't even think of it as a marketing tool necessarily i just was really interested in the storytelling aspect and how to how i could like communicate my experiences abroad with my friends and family back home because we all know it's like we get we have these crazy experiences and then we try to tell our friends about it and they seem so disinterested they're like oh okay cool like you're talking about morocco again cool and it's like you know, they don't get it. And so one of the best things that I found was video as a way of telling these stories and, and engaging my friends and family in my experiences. So that's when I started my video production company in 2011. And um, it grew from there. I built an agency in New York City. And then I moved across the country to Los Angeles uh, two and a half years ago. And um, when I came to LA, I I changed the way I worked with people. And I, rather than like producing shoots from the ground up, I helped my clients get more comfortable on camera so they could produce their own stuff and teach them and walk them through my process that I developed over the years of how to make their own content and make really great stuff, like really fun stuff. Awesome. And what sparked the move to Los Angeles? A relationship. <laughs> a relationship took me to Los Angeles, which um, has, has since ended. And it was honestly the, one of the best things that ever happened to me. I, I, was, I was a different person when I went into that relationship than I was when I came out of it. And I did a lot of transformational work um, after the breakup and, and going through the breakup and like dealing with all the heartbreak that I was experiencing. I actually went on a trip to Bali and um, fell in love with, with Bali and um, kind of like the environment there and how everybody's like really into personal development. And I, um, I just like decided that I wanted to help other women through heartbreak the way that I was supported through my heartbreak. And so that's my, that's my breakup coaching journey, if you're curious. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was going to mm -hmm. ask how that, um, if that tied into, you know, your video camera confidence uh, services at all, but yeah. it looks like it would just ran parallel to that. So um, Grant also has another question. What is your process in helping students that maybe aren't having quick success, success. in your program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, well, I, it's really important to define what does success mean to you. So what does it look like for you to be successful? And obviously I can't, I can't make any promises that you're gonna have like 100,000 YouTube subscribers, but if you really follow this framework, like this is the framework that my very successful 
clients who have 100,000 YouTube subscribers have implemented in their businesses. And, um, and the, the support is really in the Facebook groups. There are Facebook groups for each of these courses. So uh, you can pop your questions in there and get support from me, but it also the community. There's something really special about all embarking on a project or a journey in community with other people, um, just like this community. And so I really love to support people in, in the Facebook group. Awesome. All right. I have a question from Trang. Um, how do you, how and what do you use to market your content and videos? For example, pitching to sites, ads, posting certain places, etc. Yeah. Um, I do, I do some YouTube ads, which like on the paid side, that's really my, my strength and where I've been learning a lot lately. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of value in, in doing YouTube ads. And actually, if you do, YouTube will give you like a hundred dollar credit to you know, launch your first ads. So you basically can do a hundred dollars of free ads, um, first and foremost. And then uh, in terms of organically sharing content, I, I am all about playing the algorithm. So you wanna think of your, the platforms that you're on as businesses like these platforms are here to make money they're not here to like make you look good or you know promote your free photo somewhere they're really here to make money so um and what does that look like in terms of of youtube you know i can talk about like all the platforms but i'll just specifically talk about about youtube because that's one of my specialties um youtube has an algorithm that wants that benefits from you staying on the platform as long as possible. So that means if you have a video that is 20 minutes that people are watching a majority of that video, YouTube is going to be like, Hey, this person has some good content that people are staying on the platform watching. We're going to promote more of their content because that means more people will watch more of their videos for longer. So, a lot of times, you know, a lot of questions I get are, how long should my videos be? Well, my question back to you is, where are your videos gonna, gonna be placed? Where are they gonna live? Because Instagram promotes shorter videos. They like shorter content, right? Um, and then, well, IGTV is a little bit of a different beast, but YouTube prefers longer videos as long as you're getting watch time on those videos. And so it's really about playing the algorithm um, that doesn't really answer the question of how to market your videos. It's, I, I would say to get organic traffic to your YouTube videos, see what titles are getting views and are getting clicks. And then really like, just try to replicate that content. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Look at what people in your industry, in your niche, what videos are getting a lot of traction and then you just make a better version of that where you're embracing your video personality and you're doing right teaching the blah 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 or you're just telling stories or however you you create content and then um and then you will get this organic traffic starting to come to you and it'll it'll start to like do this this escalation thing um because YouTube is a search engine. So people go on there generally to search for content. So they want to learn things. They want to get a tutorial. They want to, you know, they want to feel like they've gotten something out of it. So if you can optimize your content for search results, you're going to do much better on YouTube. Um, so I would say organically, it's all about, it's all about like playing the algorithm on whatever platform you're on to get organic traffic. Yep. So for those that don't know, Google owns YouTube, which means YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So if you can optimize your, I do a lot of this myself, I'm not an expert like Paige, but if you can optimize your videos to have the correct hashtags, a full description of what you're trying to sell or promote, and the title is obviously very important, right Paige, correct me if I'm wrong in any of this. For yeah, example, you want to make sure you have those all your keyword. Your you yep. know you know what keyword each video is going to be is, absolutely is going to um, optimize for. So mm -hmm. for my travel podcast, we used to have like 
fancy titles for um, our videos, but we're changing in the next season and we're, it's going to be very like succinct. We used to have some fancy title for like how to backpack to say how to backpack Australia, but the, the keywords that are going to pull up your video are literally how to backpack Australia. That's what people are going to type into the search bar. They're not going to type in some fancy title that you thought was cool and creative. And like, we're not, yeah, and they're not, they're, this is another thing. They're not going to type in your name. No. A lot nope. of people are like, my brand name is going to be like the name of the, the title of this video. And then mm -hmm. it's going to, nobody, nobody knows your name yet. So don't put that in the title. You don't need mm -hmm. that in the title. You can put that in the description. Mm -hmm. And you have to think about literally like, what are you searching? You're searching like travel Thailand for cheap. So like, that's what you want to name your video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> travel Thailand for cheap. Um, and Grant brought up a good point. Yeah, I hear your videos, if they're under 10 minutes, YouTube isn't going to push that with their algorithm. Mm -hmm. So now video uh, video is important. Or I mean, YouTube is pushing videos that are longer than 10 minutes. I heard this is a relatively new change. Yeah, yeah. YouTube is constantly evolving. It's a lot oh, to yes. keep up with. But <laughs> yeah, watch time is the primary, is, is the primary measurement right now for data that we look okay. at. Yeah. And Jeff also dropped in custom thumbnails as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the little picture that people are going to see, right, when they're searching for your video mm -hmm. should be attractive. Um, so it should be point. clickable. Make it clickable. Think of it as a billboard for your videos. So it's like a little advertisement for your video. And if you are competing against everybody else who is making, tra you know, travel Thailand for cheap videos and their billboards are cuter and hotter and more clickable than yours, you're not even going to get a view. Even if your video is awesome, you're not even going to get that view. So you really, really need a good thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay, let's get, let's uh, keep going through. So Sarah uh, at Cheers to Travel, she said she's been vlogging since 2016. Um, Sarah has gear. Would this still benefit me as far as being better on camera? I think video scripting would be super helpful, but do you help critique videos and give feedback throughout your course? Um, yeah, in terms of like video critiques, I don't do full on video critiques. That's an add on. So if you wanted to, you know, do a one hour call and we could do a video critique, happy to do that. Um, if you, if it's, the way that people use the Facebook group is they'll share a link to their video in the Facebook group and be like, Hey, what can I get some feedback on this? So I'll give, I'll give you like a little bit of feedback in the Facebook group, but then there's also support from the community as well. All right. Good to know. Um, and Grant wants to know the course is fully online, correct? Fully online. Okay. Great. We don't meet in person. <laughs> yeah, we can. Especially not right now. <laughs> I know. We would be, trust me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Laura, travel 80 by 80. Her question is, what if we don't have many videos from your past travels? She has more photos than videos. How do you go about getting content from those past locations to do videos on? Getting content from, okay, so like, like curating content from past trips, like putting everything together. Um, I mean, there's, I think it's very, it's a very cool thing if you wanted to do a voiceover kind of thing. And that way you can really like illustrate and tell the story with snapshots. And maybe there's like, you know, maybe there's like a couple clips of video, but it wouldn't necessarily be like a full on edited video. It would be more of a, um, like, what do you call it? There's a word for it. Like TikTok lets you do, put, lets you put together a minute long montage and then you can voice montage. over the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it reels on Instagram might do that too. Yeah. But there's yeah. So like putting together a montage with some, some voiceover and some music would be awesome. And then you can be like, this is, you know, share all of your like narrative stories of the past, the past travels that you've been on. That's such a fun way to, to use old content. I love that. Yeah, you can do that on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. You might be able to do that on Instagram Reels because it's literally the exact same thing as TikTok. They tried to copy them. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many programs like One Second Every Day also. You can put, uh, yeah, Laura, you've heard of that. You can put your photo, a second of a video or a photo per day and then it turns it into a video for you, which is great. 
Um, so there are apps that, that do this for you as well. And Jeff also said there's services online where you can buy some stock locations of stock video. Yeah, yeah, that's, really that's a good idea. I never I didn't think about that either, yeah. So Paige, are you teaching things, like I've heard essentially with a video, you have seven seconds to capture a viewer's attention. Yeah. Seven seconds. Nice. Yeah. I didn't know if somebody was talking. Um, yeah, that is, that's huge. It's like less than seven seconds now because our scroll, like habitually, we are now conditioned to do this scrolling thing, right? With like very, very limited time. So um, uh, in my scripting template, in my scripting guide, I talk about hooks and how to use, how to really effectively use a hook in your video, which is the beginning of the video, the first couple seconds that grabs people's attention. There you go, a hook. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, oops, do we have more sorry. questions? I think that looks Does everybody like... feel like excited about doing video now? 